This lesson will be similar to normal landings, but with the addition of a crosswind. If you're unfamiliar with normal landings procedures in calm winds, review that first before moving on to this video. In fact, I recommend that you complete the previous mission a few times before moving on to this one, and even do a few good landings on your own, each with a stable approach. For this flight, the ATIS reports the wind is from 250 at 15 knots which is a pretty good crosswind from the right. We know it will be a right crosswind because we're landing on runway 21 left, which is named that because it faces a magnetic heading of about 210 degrees. If the wind is coming from 250, that will be blowing from our right to our left at a 40 degree angle. Since the wind is not coming directly from the right, we'll also have a bit of a headwind component. The goal of this video will be to demonstrate how to compensate for the crosswind and land safely. We'll use the Papi again, and we'll shoot for the same landing spot as before, the beginning of the 1000 foot markers. We're currently on a long final for runway 21 left in Prescott, the same runway on which we landed in the last lesson. When there's no crosswind, the number one reference point will be on top of the aiming point and the aircraft would track the same direction that the nose is pointed. However, when there is a crosswind, the aircraft will drift off course if no correction is made. To overcome the crosswind and track straight in on final, you'll have to adjust the aircraft's heading into the wind so that the ground track lines up with the final approach course. You used basically the same procedure to compensate for wind a few lessons ago when practicing ground reference maneuvers. The heading adjustment you'll need to make is called a wind correction angle, and you'll want to apply enough of a wind correction angle that the aircraft tracks straight down the center line. This will result in the nose being pointed into the wind and a ground track straight towards the runway, like we have now. The act of applying a wind correction angle so the aircraft tracks a specific ground track is called crabbing. You'll know you're crabbing correctly on final if the runway is stationary and not sliding to either side of the window. The center line should appear to be a straight, vertical line, not angled left or right. Cessna 0, Mike Sierra, wind 250 at 15. Runway 21 left, clear to land. Clear to land, 21 left, 0 Mike Sierra. That was our landing clearance. We heard the term, cleared to land, preceded by the correct runway and our call sign. On short final, below 500 feet is a good time to establish the side slip. A side slip is a wind correction that also aligns the longitudinal axis of the aircraft with the runway center line in preparation for landing. It will make the aircraft uncoordinated temporarily, but will greatly reduce the side loading on touchdown. To transition to the side slip for this landing, We'll apply left rudder so the nose is aligned with the center line, and apply a small right bank so the plane doesn't drift to the left. Again, our aiming point will be just before the touchdown point, although now that we have a little bit of a headwind, let's move it a bit closer to the touchdown point. As you track inbound on short final, maintain the side slip by using rudder to keep the number one reference point on the center line, and aileron to prevent or correct for any drifting. To ensure a stabilized approach, have the side slip fully established no later than 100 feet above the ground. The aircraft should be pegged on the final approach speed, it should be on a constant approach path towards the aiming point, aligned with the runway center line, configured properly, and trimmed for landing. If any of those criteria aren't met by 100 feet, go around. We are currently stable at 100 feet, so I'll say, stable, and begin to reduce the power to idle for landing. Here's the round out and flare. We slowly pitch up until we're at a VY pitch attitude a couple feet above the runway. And since we're correcting for the crosswind with right bank, 
The right main wheel should touch down first, and then the downwind wheel, and then we ease the nose gear down. The goal is to touch the wheels down in that order, with no side loading, and on the center line. Keep aileron applied into the wind through the rollout to prevent the wind from lifting the wing, side loading the aircraft, and pushing the aircraft off the center line. As we slow down, we can input full aileron deflection to the right. Don't do that while you're going too fast though, or the plane could roll. In a strong crosswind, it's alright to touch down at a pitch attitude a few degrees less than VY to reduce the length of the flare and prevent from getting too slow above the runway, which could possibly result in not enough control effectiveness to overcome a strong crosswind. Just make sure the pitch is raised enough for the upwind wheel, downwind wheel, and nose wheel to touch down in that order. So that's how you do a crosswind approach and landing with a crosswind from the right. Just like last time, I'll leave you with one more landing, this time with a crosswind from the left. My instruction ends here, but watch this last landing with everything you learned in mind and try to anticipate what I'm going to do next. Cessna Zero Mike Sierra, wind 170 at 15, runway 21 left, clear to land. Clear to land, two on the left. Zero mic zero. Stable. Zero Mike Sierra, turn right and contact ground. Turning right and contacting ground. Have a good day, Zero Mike Sierra.